um, Bates has made is a completely unbiblical one. All right, the doctrine of Christ's imputed righteousness and the merely declaratory uh, or forensic sense of justification that he imagines is nowhere to be found in the scriptures. Moreover, uh, it's nowhere to be found in Christian history for 1,500 years until Luther. And that judgment is not merely my own, but it's the one, it's the judgment of some of the best Protestant historical scholarship. And I would direct you to somebody like Alistair McGrath yeah. in his two volume history, Justitia Dei, History of the Doctrine of Justification. McGrath is an evangelical Protestant, he's no friend of the Catholic Church mm. as such. Uh, and he admits that Luther's understanding of the nature of justification is a complete theological novelty never before seen in human history. That'd be pretty surprising, right? If, if Scripture really was so clear in his teaching on justification, why did nobody, East, West, you know, Latin, Greek, Syriac, you name it, figure this out until uh, the idiosyncratic Luther? And why did it only emerge in, uh, in Saxony in the 15th century? Um, but it's also the judgment of some of the best Protestant biblical scholarship. And I would direct you to the book Justification by the Anglican scholar N.T. Wright, who, again, is not a Catholic. He right. doesn't particularly like the Catholic Church. It bugs him enormously when people <laughs> read his books and become Catholic, as lots of people do. <laughs> yeah. And he's always trying to argue people out of that decision into becoming his kind of Anglican. And yet, uh, I think you'll find his reasoning uh, pretty unavoidable. Um, so let's actually go to the text of Scripture for a minute. What does St. Paul actually say in the book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 13? He says, it's not those who hear the law, it's those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. Is there a declaratory aspect to the doctrine of justification? You bet. On what basis does God declare us righteous? Namely, that he has made us righteous. Paul says, says in verses 25 to 29 that our hearts are circumcised by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, so that we truly fulfill the decaumata tunamu, the righteous requirements of the law, are fully met in us who walk according to the Spirit, Romans 8, 3, and 4. So it's not a merely forensic declaration of Christ's imputed righteousness. That's a fiction nowhere found in the Bible. But it's on the basis of the love of God shed abroad in our hearts that we truly fulfill the divine law, loving God and loving neighbor, because that is given to us by grace through faith. Okay, very good. This is called a communion here on EWTN. Uh, Lori is in Memphis. She emailed us. She says, I'm a convert from evangelical Presbyterianism. I am uh, quite familiar with the five points of Calvinism, but I would like some help explaining the Catholic stance to refute them, if, in fact, Catholics don't agree with some. From my own research, I was able to conclude the belief in perseverance of saints is a false doctrine but I really don't know about the Catholic stance on the other four, total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, and irresistible grace. Do you have a brief explanation of the Catholic stance on the five points of Calvinism and perhaps some additional reading you could suggest for a deeper dive? Yeah, absolutely. So the deeper dive is I want you to read the book Predestination by Reginald Garrigou Lagrange. Uh, that is going to be probably the best place to go uh, to give you the Catholic answer on these questions. Um, total depravity is false from the Catholic point of view. Total depravity is the Protestant doctrine that all of our works are hateful to God even with the help of grace. All right, that's false because scripture and tradition tell us that with grace we can in fact merit. Jesus says if you give even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because they belong to me, you will not lose your reward. So merit is a real part of the Christian life when empowered by grace. Total depravity is false. Um, uh, L, which is limited atonement, the doctrine of limited atonement is that Jesus uh, did not die for the whole world, but only for the elect. That is also uh, rejected by the Catholic faith. There was a Catholic sect called the Jansenists in the 17th and 18th century mm -hmm. that held to the doctrine of limited atonement. Uh, they were they were ruled out of bounds as that's a heretical doctrine. Um, uh, uh, irresistible grace. Uh, the Catholic Church teaches that grace can be resisted. Grace can be. There is such a thing as resisting grace. Okay. Uh, when it comes to the doctrine of perseverance of the saints, the Catholic Church believes in a version of the doctrine of the perseverance of the saints, but it's not the Calvinist doctrine. Hmm. St. Augustine, in his book, The Perseverance of the Saints, teaches that the gift of perseverance is a grace that cannot be merited. It's a grace that cannot be merited. Okay. Um, and so anyone who perseveres to the end does so only because of God's gracious, gracious cooperation. Without that, we can't persevere. Anybody who perseveres has got the gift of perseverance. We can pray for the gift of perseverance. We cannot earn the gift of perseverance. The difference from the Calvinist is that in Calvin's scheme, if you are regenerate, if you are born again, 
if you are justified, Calvin teaches, you will necessarily persevere. Uh, right? The Catholic Church says no. The, the, uh, the, 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 the set of regenerate people and the set of persevering people is not identical. There are those who will receive the gift of grace, fail to cooperate with grace, fall away and not be saved. So those who persevere only do so because of grace, but not everybody who has grace perseveres. That's the Catholic teaching. Calvin teaches something different. Okay. Unconditional election? Well, there's a version of that that is Catholic. The way Calvin understands it is not correct. Calvin believes in the doctrine of double predestination, that God, uh, before the foundation of the world, chooses to send most people to hell of his own decree without foreseeing merits or demerits. Catholic faith says, no, God does elect to salvation. He does predestine, but he predestines no one to hell. Dr. David Anders, thank you.